Yeah, me, me, me and Dana butt heads. We, we butt heads because Dana likes me. He's a fan of me. But he don't like the fact that I'm so headstrong. And in his mind, he had a clear path on how he could have made me a big star. And in my mind, I'm a man. Don't don't tell me to be more like Connor. Fuck Connor. Like I like that's disrespectful to me. So at the end of the day, I was I was more grateful because I had to had to stop and I had to realize I don't own a UFC. They don't have to let me fight here. They don't have to let me utilize their platform. I didn't help build this. You know what I mean? So I could think that they should have promoted me a certain way. I could think that everything was a conspiracy theory. It really don't matter. All I had to do was go out there and fight and win. And I had a lot of times where I was thinking about the other stuff. And I did have the times where when I finally got to the belt, uh, it wasn't very enjoyable for me. So I turned up in other ways. You know, I used to spend a reckless amount of money in the clubs, bought so much stupid shit. And um, to be honest, I was living a part of me that was like maybe the version of the younger tyrant that he couldn't afford. But now I got money. So now I can fucking turn up. I can do what I want to do. I can buy what I want to buy. And I was making millions of dollars. So at the end of the day, um, I, I kind of went from an alter ego to that alter ego almost trying to take over who Tyron was. And I had to kill a motherfucker, like, no bullshit. Like, literally had an alter ego. We called him T-Money. When I got off the plane in L.A., it was a different person. Okay. When I got like, right in the drive where, where I'm sitting at right now, I would get here, I would park, I would take my jury off, I would sit in the car and I would pray, take a deep breath, and I walk in the house and I'm dad. I'm in sweats, I'm in flip-flops, you know what I mean? And I was living two different lives. And part of it was suppressing, you know, I, like, it, I'm not going to act like certain things weren't fucked up that happened. Yeah, it was. But everything, to me, I'm from St. Louis, it's about respect. We live for it and we die for it. We will fucking kill you and we will fucking have your back over respect. So when I feel like when a man give me their word and they disrespect me by not keeping it, then my trust is gone. So I was always on the edge. I was always looking in the bushes for somebody to jump out. And I never really had that trust. And I feel like Dana and, and, and the UFC sometimes, like, every negotiation, every fight, Tyron, oh, I felt like it was a big sigh. Oh, my God, okay. How long is it going to take to get this fight done? But I'm going to be honest, most of the last three fights, they didn't have no problems with me. I didn't complain. I didn't ask for more money. I didn't argue opponents. I didn't argue venue. I just said, okay. And I and I I never bashed them. I never bashed the UFC, like for literally five or six times. Like it got to a point where I recognized that Dana White has too many compounding, like-minded colleagues in other sports and worlds. That if he says one thing, it echoes so loud that my little shit gonna get smashed like a like a soda can. So what was it helping for me to tell my version of the truth? Nothing. Never advanced me. And and you so just quit. And and so that's the old T money, right? Uh, he and, done. He out. And and what are we looking at now? Hey, right now I'm just blessed for the moment. I'm blessed to go out here and get a second chance to be at the top. I'm looking forward to, to chasing down a, a boxing world championship belt. Uh, I'm gonna start the party out by fucking up Jake Paul on Sunday. Um, beating. I'm gonna punch him everywhere: neck, throat, head, back of the head. Give me all the warnings. Give me all the smoke. I'm, I'm it's gonna be nasty and brutal. I'm, I'm excited again. I'm happy again. It's been a long time since I felt this way, and I think this is just the beginning of me. Every fight is personal. If you sign the line, it's war. Everybody, I don't care who you are. If you sign on the line, you want to take away money from my family. You want to fuck up my legacy that I worked so hard for. And you know, I'm gonna finish this race off like I saw it. I didn't see me losing four fights in a row and fucking having lackluster performances, even in victory. God never showed me that. So I'm going to turn up. I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to go big. And at the end of the day, everybody, when they when they think of combat sports, it's going to be no way they don't think of me. I'm going to come up in their mind when they, when they talk about the conversation. So you're, you're just going to you're just gonna go out there, and no matter what, you're going to die on your shield. I'm going to have. I'm going to have. I'm not going to die. I'm going to fuck him up. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> I'm not... I, I don't, this, this ain't a bucket list for me. Yeah. It's for him. He's going to go out and down his shield because if he beats me, oh, it's like, oh, his brother was so happy. He lasted against Floyd. He celebrated. That's his greatest lifetime achievement in his life. Nothing else he's ever done could ever compare to lasting. How you living, Jay Piven? New episodes dropping every Wednesday on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Let's get into it.